Come right in. I'm glad you could make it. I am. The lieutenant and I are in the middle of a case, a murder case. If you'll be seated. We'll bring you up to date. Thank you very much. The coroner's office is sending the photographs right over. Fine. Oh, Pat, get me all the evidence in this Chambers case, will you? Yes, sir. I'll be right back. I'm sure you've read something about this Paul Chambers affair in your morning papers. Chambers owned the Chambers Publishing Company. When he finished school, he was voted the man most likely to have his head bashed in. That's precisely the way the lieutenant found him last night. And you'll soon see what killed him. Thanks. The scene of the crime was Chambers Country State, about 30 miles from here. When the lieutenant got there, Chambers was sprawled out on the floor. This paperweight lay a few feet away from the corpse. Pretty much stained with blood, but the killer wasn't quite so obliging when it came to fingerprints. There were none. Just when I was figuring on a nice, quiet evening alone. I'm sorry we're late, Evans. Patricia wouldn't let me drive fast on these icy roads. Body's on the way at the morgue, Chief. Fingerprint boys just got out. Is um, that the murder weapon? can be a very handy little gadget at times. I suppose you know what this means. The murder was probably unpremeditated. How do you figure that out? Well, whoever was in this room with Chambers tonight didn't come here with the intention of killing him. If he had, he would have brought along his own weapon. Then the murder must have been the result of some argument. Brilliant. I suppose you checked on whom these initials might stand for. Oh, J.O.K. could very well stand for the author's name on this manuscript. Dawn Before Thunder by Jerome O. Kendrick. I had a man pick him up. They ought to be here any minute. Good. Now, who was it that phoned the police this evening? Chambers did himself. Chambers? Mm-hmm. He phoned headquarters at 8.42 tonight. Right after he identified himself, he hung up. Or else he was forced to hang up. Well, in any event, uh, headquarters traced the call to this number. They phoned right back. Nobody answered. Maybe Chambers changed his mind. Maybe it was changed for him. Well, they sent a police car right over. And Chambers was dead when the car got here? He couldn't have been in less of a position to talk. Have you found anyone who could talk? Not a sign of anyone. I'd certainly like to know what brought Chambers out here on a night like this. What brought Chambers is a question. Look who's here. All right, Gary, you don't have to be so physical. What's going on? Look what I found, Lieutenant. Our first suspect. I know this looks very suspicious, Lieutenant. Granted. Come on. Pat found her playing hide-and-seek in the hall behind the clock. Believe me, I have a very logical explanation. Oh, I'm sure you have, Miss... Uh... Aldrich. Eve Aldrich. Uh, sit down if you want to. Then we'd better start by your telling us what you were doing here, Miss Aldrich. I came earlier this evening at Paul's... Uh, Mr. Chambers' request. He called me in town and asked me to meet him here. What did Mr. Chambers want to see you about? He wanted my ideas on illustrating a new book he's just accepted for publication. I've been doing most of Mr. Uh, Chambers' artwork in the past few years. Is the book he had in mind? It could have been. <laughs> Didn't you and Mr. Chambers discuss it? When I got here, Mr. Chambers was dead. Why didn't you call the police? I'll be very frank. It's better that way. Paul's past hasn't been a very tidy one. If I were found here, I knew I'd be part of a horrid scandal. I thought it best if it appeared I never came. But just as I was leaving, the police arrived. So you uh, hid behind the clock. I admit it looks dreadfully guilty. But there you have it. Hmm, that's probably Patrolman Connors with the author of that manuscript. I can bring myself in, thank you. It's a little habit I picked up at the tender age of three. I trust everything I say will be held against me, so I'll venture nothing more incriminating than a somewhat reluctant good evening. We should have brought an interpreter. You're a Kendrick, huh? I assume you know what happened here tonight. One of your bulwarks of civic defense informed me in no uncertain terms. Alas, poor Paul. 
I always told him he'd never live to see 50. However, I didn't mean that I'd attend to it personally. Well, then maybe you can tell us who did. Well, well, well. If it isn't little Eva. Now tell me, why, with a corpse in the neighborhood, didn't I expect to see you? Jerome, darling, your fangs are showing. When I'm near you, my pet, I like to be dressed for the occasion. What a clever way you have of letting me know that you picked up my matches at the scene of the crime. Do you deny being here tonight? This may sound depressingly trite, but I've been in my apartment all evening. I'd ask you to check with my houseboy, but I don't have a houseboy. Then how do you account for your matches being on Chambers' desk? The first thing that pops into mind is rather good, so I'll tell you that. Paul and I had lunch together yesterday afternoon. In all probability, he picked up my matches from the table. But... Yes? What were you going to say, Miss Aldrich? Paul never smoked. Why would he pick up anybody's matches? Bravo, darling. I'll do the same for you someday. And since this seems to be open season for cutting throats, perhaps you'll tell me what these men have got on you. Absolutely nothing. You're here for some reason. Paul asked me to come. Why should Paul ask you to come here? This is far too romantic a setting for you and Paul. The day of lovely settings with you and Paul ended six months ago. That's what I like to see. Friendship. Thank you. Don't listen to him, Mr. Allen. He's just trying to incriminate me. Don't forget. He hasn't explained about those matches yet. I'm not forgetting, Miss Aldrich. Uh, police, huh? Oh, we just want to ask a few questions, Faber. I want to ask you about your boss, Paul Chambers. Yeah, Chambers. I guess he's pretty sore, all right, about the new car getting all cracked up. But it wasn't my fault. The car skidded. That can happen to any chauffeur, even the best of them. Chambers won't find out about the car or anything else. What do you mean? You'll find out, all right. Chambers was killed tonight. Killed? But I don't get it. Or don't I? You know, I kind of thought something was fishy. Him wanting me to take him way up there on a night like this. What time did you reach the estate tonight? Somewhere around, around 8, I think. What made you leave? Oh, I guess Chambers didn't want me around. He told me to go into town and take in a movie. You uh, recognize this? Yeah, sure. It's mine. Smashed when your car cracked up. Look at the time. Five after nine. So what? Chambers phoned the police about 8.42. We have reason to believe that the murderer was with him then. Still don't know what you're getting at. If, as you say, you left before the murderer arrived, that means you must have been gone before 8.42. Okay, I'll buy that. So, maybe I left at 8.32. Still so what? Then it must have taken you from, say, 8.30 to five minutes after nine to get from the estate to where your car smashed up. That's over half an hour to do two miles driving. Boy. Took it slow. How slow can you get? Was your relationship with Chambers a friendly one? Sure. Well, we weren't exactly buddies and all, but... Yeah, we got along swell. Fine. Well, we'll uh, keep in touch with you. Uh, don't run away. I'll be around. You know, sometimes the best way to ascertain a relationship between a murder victim and a suspect is to examine the dead man's effects. That's right. Last night, when we looked through Chambers' apartment, we found plenty. A flock of IOUs, all signed by Faber. Faber had been borrowing money from his boss. If you ask me, Chief, it's an open and shut proposition. Chambers pressured Faber for the dough. Faber killed him. Well, aren't you forgetting, Lieutenant, that we also found this in Chambers' apartment. P.C. Be at your summer estate Friday night, February 12th, 8.30 p.m. If you want your past to remain a secret, don't notify the police. Come alone. I'm serious. If you'll recall when you dropped in a while ago, the lieutenant and I were examining some newspaper clippings. We found out plenty about Chambers' past. Eleven years ago, he served a four-year stretch for embezzlement. 
Then after he's released, he changed his name to Chambers and started life all over again. Prison record is something a prominent publisher might want to forget. Well, I think that brings us all up to date on the case. Excuse me, Mr. Allen. Here are the photographs the coroner called you about. Good. These may hold the key to the entire solution. Uh, and Charlie Faber has arrived. Oh? It's a little early, isn't he? Have him wait. And use him to separate Jerome and little Eva when they get here. Yes, sir. Yes. This supplies all the evidence I hoped it would. This is a photograph of Chambers' right wrist. Notice the fingerprints left by the grip of somebody's hand, and particularly the thumbprint. Now, with Lieutenant Evans' cooperation, I'd like to show you how I think that print got there. Uh, would you sit behind the desk? I'm a guinea pig. <laughs> now, I'm the blackmailer. Evans, your chambers. Oh, fine. I'm a dead guinea pig, no less. I've just finished threatening you. You don't like it. You call the police. Okay. Well, go on. Pick up the phone. Yes, sir? Uh, we're just acting, Miss Kelly. Naturally, my first impulse is to stop you. So I grab your wrist, like this. Those are my thumb is on the outside of Evans' wrist. But if you recall the photograph, the thumbprint was on the inside of Chambers' wrist. Then whoever stopped Chambers from finishing that telephone call must have been left-handed. Certainly looks that way. Well, all we have to do is to figure out which one of our suspects uses his left hand. I know already that one of them does. Hmm? I found it out from these matches. Look at them. A right-handed person invariably pulls off a match from the right side of the pack, like this. Likewise, a left-handed person pulls them off from the left side. You'll notice that all the matches that have been removed were removed from the left side of this pack. Then Kendrick must be the guilty one. Perhaps. But he's the only one of our suspects that doesn't have a motive. That's what I'm going to find out right now. Pat, have all of them arrived? All three. Good. Send them in. I think I'll have something for you in a little while. Here they are, Mr. Allen. Uh, Miss Aldrich, you sit there. Faber next to Miss Aldrich. It goes without saying where I sit. Now, I've called you all in because I think you're interested in learning who killed Paul Chambers. Evans, give them those pads and pencils. In a moment, I'll tell you why. I'm going to read you a letter. Listen carefully, because I'll read it just once. Then I want you to write down that pad, what I've read, as best you can. Sign your name. P.C. Be at your summer estate, Friday night, February 12th. If you want your past to remain a secret, don't notify the police. Come alone. I'm serious. All right, start writing. Hey, even Kendrick is using his right hand. I bet he's on to us. This takes me back to elementary school. Sometimes, Mr. Kendrick, the solution to a complicated murder case is an elementary one. Now, I know you're all wondering why I asked you to write those messages. I had thought that one of you would use either his or her left hand. Apparently, I was mistaken. Oh, Kendrick. Thank you. And now that you've succeeded in making me tip my hand, as it were, just what have you proved? That it was you who stopped Chambers from completing his phone call to the police last night. That's ridiculous. I have a photograph of your prints on Chambers' wrist. I could book you on suspicion of murder on the strength of it. I can show you the photograph if you want. Never mind, Alan. I... I'll tell you what happened. Then you finally do admit that you were with Chambers last night. As I told you before, Chambers and I had lunch together the previous afternoon. We did discuss my novel. But the Chambers didn't accept it. You mean he turned it down? I was altogether appalled. I'd spent over a year working on it, and only because Chambers had promised to buy it. Well, go on. Last night, I telephoned his house, and one of the servants told me that he had gone to his estate. So you saw your chance to get to him there? Precisely. I handed him the script again, and I insisted that he reconsider. I told him that if he didn't publish my book, 
I take measures to bring his past to light. And what was his reaction to that? He called me an anonymous blackmailer. Then he started to call the police. I, I became panicky and I, I grabbed his wrist. And when that didn't stop him, you picked up the paperweight and killed him. No, I never touched him. Thank you, Kendrick. I put the pressure on you because I had to know how you figured in this. It just so happened that you blundered in on Chambers when he had a rendezvous with someone else. That someone else was one of you, too. Each of you had a motive. Yours, Favor, was a financial one. You owed Chambers a lot of money. Yours, Miss Aldrich, was romantic. Chambers was going to marry another woman. Something just gave one of you away, and here it is. When I read off that blackmail message, I purposely omitted one small detail, the exact time of the rendezvous. The murderer knew that time and subconsciously wrote it down, even though I hadn't mentioned it. Yes, Miss Aldrich. You arrived at the estate about 8.30. Kendrick was with Chambers, so you hid until he left. Then you confronted Chambers. You threatened him. Unless he gave up the other woman, you'd reveal his past. He refused. Then, in a fit of jealous rage, you hurled a paperweight at him. You didn't know that a police car was on its way to apprehend you as you left the estate. You didn't know when you filled in the missing hour that you were signing your own confession. All right, Evans, take her away. It was nice of you to drop in. There'll be another case before you, a public prosecutor, soon. We'll expect to see you then. <laughs>